Tonight, our special transmission as the Israeli economy faces significant challenges due to its ongoing war on Palestine. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I'm Zahra Sayyid. Today is the 185th day since Israel started bombing Palestinians indiscriminately. During the month of Ramadan, Israeli strikes have killed 2,248 civilians. This makes it an average of 75 casualties per day. In the past 24 hours, Israeli warplanes have bombed two homes in Gaza City Zaytun neighborhood, causing dozens of casualties. Palestinians are gearing up for Eid al-Fitr with feelings of despair. They continue to struggle with displacement and shortages of supplies after six months of war. Hamas says it is considering a ceasefire proposal from Egyptian mediators. The militant group criticizes Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu's threat of a ground invasion in Rafah. Reports say that mediators have presented a new ceasefire proposal to Hamas and Israel that would include a six-week pause in fighting. It would include a swap of 40 Israeli prisoners for at least 700 Palestinians imprisoned by Israel. The death toll from Israel's war is devastating. At the time of writing, at least uh, 33,360 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli attacks. Another 8,000 are presumed dead under the rubble. Israel's revised death toll from Hamas's attacks stands at 1,139. Palestinian Christians in Gaza are resorting to burying their dead in Muslim cemeteries due to the dangers of traveling to their own graveyards. Israel has yet to allow residents of northern Gaza, where the Christian cemetery is located, to return home. Travel restrictions compound the grief for families, preventing them from giving proper farewells to their loved ones. Despite religious differences, cooperation between Muslims and Christians persists in Palestine. Israeli media reports traveling along roads that could get bombed or shelled increases the anguish for people trying to bury their dead. The International Court of Justice has concluded hearings on Nicaragua's petition against Germany for allegedly aiding genocide in Gaza. While final ruling will take years, provisional measures sought by Nicaragua could be decided within weeks. They may require Germany to suspend military assistance to Israel and resume support for the United Nations Relief Agency. Germany is being represented by Tanya von Oslar Gleitchen from the German Foreign Office. Oslar Gleitchen argues the case lacks legal and factual basis. She defends Germany's commitment to international humanitarian law and rejects Nicaragua's allegations. She has urged the top court for the urgent dismissal of the case. Six months into Israel's war on Gaza, financial agencies project a grim economic outlook for the country. Media outlets report the ongoing war has resulted in the loss of $56 billion for the Israeli economy. The loss primarily comes from military expenses. During the war, Israel's economy has shrunk by 19.4%, with major declines in private consumption and business investments. Israel has called on 300,000 reservists for duty and locked Palestinian workers out, causing significant losses to the workforce sector. The move has displaced 200,000 Israelis. The construction sector is seeing weekly losses of $650 million. Real estate sales are reportedly the worst they have been in the past 30 years. Despite a resilient tech sector, Overall, exports have dropped by 18.3%. Agencies like Fitch and Moody's have downgraded Israel's credit rating, citing increased political risks and weakened institutions due to the prolonged conflict. Experts say Israel faces substantial economic hurdles ahead due to a projected budget deficit of 6.8% and rising debt-to-GDP ratio. Australia is considering recognizing a Palestinian state marking a policy shift. Australian Foreign Minister Penny Wong echoes the British counterpart David Cameron's narrative that such recognition, including at the United Nations, would solidify a two-state solution. She says there is an urgency to have an international dialogue on Palestinian statehood to advance the two-state framework. 
Despite Israel's opposition to unilateral recognition, several Western nations, including Spain, advocate for it. Recently, the Palestinian Authority has appealed to the United Nations Security Council for full membership. Wong reiterated that Israel's lasting security lies in regional acknowledgement, endorsing the imperative of a two-state solution. Israel vows to retaliate following Turkey's decision to limit exports until a ceasefire in Gaza is secured. Turkey's trade ministry announced a restriction of various exports to Israel, including steel and jet fuel. It cited Israel's alleged violations of international law and obstructing humanitarian aid to Gaza as reasons for the move. The decision remains effective until Israel ensures a ceasefire and allows uninterrupted humanitarian aid to Gaza. Israel's foreign minister is blaming Turkey for unilaterally violating trade agreements. Foreign Minister of Israel Katz is accusing Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan for sacrificing economic interests to support Hamas. He vows to respond to these trade restrictions. Nathaniel Veltman, convicted of murdering a Muslim family in 2021, is appealing his convictions. He overran his pickup truck on five members of the Afzal family in London, Ontario. This led to the death of four members of the Afzal family. A nine-year-old boy was an orphan. He was convicted by the trial court on four counts of first-degree murder and one count of attempted murder. His apology during sentencing was deemed hollow by relatives. Despite a life sentence, his lawyer claims wrongful conviction citing inadmissible evidence and biased persecution. A rare total solar eclipse captivated Canadians yesterday, offering a mesmerizing celestial spectacle. The eclipse carved a path of totality, stretching across eastern Canada. Despite concerns about massive crowds and traffic congestion, the turnout seemed manageable. From Ontario to Newfoundland, cities like Kingston, Montreal and Fredericton experienced moments of complete darkness as the moon obscured the sun. In some areas such as Sherbrooke and North Hartley in Quebec, Viewers enjoyed up to three and a half minutes of totality. Thousands gathered at popular spots, including parks and waterfronts, to witness the eclipse. Many described the event as emotionally and spiritually profound. In Montreal, 100,000 people flocked to Parc Jean Drapeau Island to watch the celestial show. The city administration says the, total, the last total eclipse in Montreal happened in 1932. Other accounts suggest that the last such eclipse over a large area occurred in 1979. Thank you for watching. On behalf of our team at Muslim Network TV, we wish you a very happy Eid. We pray for the plight of our Muslim brothers and sisters in Palestine. Our news is produced by Muslim Network TV, which is a not-for-profit organization. We need your support for donations. Please scan the QR code on our broadcast or visit muslimnetwork.tv to donate now, so we can continue to amplify the voices of Muslims in Canada and abroad. Assalamu alaikum.